So in three, two. Good afternoon. As chair, I now call to order the September 21st, 2023 meeting of the Equity Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with board policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after all consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's equity committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Mr. Handy or Ms. Siebold if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Siebold, please call the role of board members to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, Ms. Drummond? Ms. Frempong? Ms. Lichter? Ms. Rampong is present. Oh, and sorry. Ms. Lichter is present too. <laughs> Thank you. Ms. Tulusky? Present. Thank you. Ms. Harvey? And Dr. Savoy? Yes, I'm present. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Siebold, please call the role of staff members and guests participating in today's meeting. All right, I think we just have Mr. Handy. Present. Okay. We have any other staff or guests on the call? I don't think do. Okay. All right. I think we're good. All right. Thank you. You're the first welcome. item on the agenda is 2023 through 2024 strategic plan for the Department of Equity and Cultural Proficiency, followed by the 2023 2024 Equity Committee. Topics. And for that, I call on Mr. Douglas Handy. Thank you, Dr. Savoy. Uh, so I'm going to uh, switch over to my slide deck. So I will ask if, uh, well, actually, I know Mr. Corns will tell me just to start presenting. And I think that'll give me the access. Um, hold on just a minute. Okay, I got to do, let me do this. So, uh, Mr. Corns, are you there? Uh, yeah, so Mr. Handy, uh, when you do your share, um, find um do not share your desktop but share the window and choose gotcha. the one that looks like your full slide deck okay because i can't i was trying to do the presenting teams but that doesn't work right uh no, no sir not for these unfortunately it's a yeah. um the live event is not uh going to help you with that gotcha okay will i still be able to see my notes um if you have two monitors sir you you absolutely should be able to gotcha okay all right, so let me, I'm um, hitting share. Let me make sure I'm sharing and share the one that looks like. Is that right, Mr. Corns? Did I need to go into presentation yeah. mode? Yeah, you need to present first, sir. Oh, present first. Okay, I can't present from here. No, there, that now, but uh, Mr. Randy, when you share, you need to share the other window now. Got you. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so I want to. Okay, okay, give me just a minute. I think I got it now. Mr. Corns and team, you can't see anything now, though, right? 
No, sir, we're we um we do not have your uh, your your view yet. So, um, did you find your team's window? I did. Um, It looks like so. This is my no. That's not it. So, Mr. Coins, um, what I might do? Let me stop sharing. Can I send you the slide deck? Is it? Do we have um, is it deck? this? Yeah, yeah. If um, if you'd like to share it over, that would be fine. Okay. on the way. Thank you. And committee members, I apologize. I'm accustomed to presenting in teams, but teams' lives a little different. Um, so I apologize for my technical difficulties. It's fine. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Corns. Appreciate your help as always. Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. So good afternoon, everyone. Um, I will be sharing with you an overview of the 2023-2024 strategic plan for the Department of Equity and Cultural Proficiency. This strategic plan guides the work of my department throughout this current school year. Next slide, please. In May of 2023, my team, which consists of four specialists, an administrative assistant, a program assistant, and me convened a retreat to develop our strategic plan for the current school year. As a team, we agreed that our strategic plan must be rooted in the mission and vision that we had established for our department. Additionally, we realized that we had not yet specified the beliefs which inform our mission and vision, nor had we come to agreement on our values, which in turn inform our beliefs. Next slide, please. So therefore, our first step in identifying the values that we held as a team was to identify the values of each individual team member. Once each team member shared their individual values, we discussed those values and came to a consensus on the values that rep would represent us as a whole. Through this process of identifying our values, we also engaged in community building, which is a core component of our work. You will see community building as a theme woven throughout our strategic plan. Our team's values are accountability, authenticity, compassion, honesty, humanity, perspective, relationships, and respect. Next slide, please. Once we identified our team's values, we went on to develop our team's belief statement, which was rooted in those values. So our belief as a department is that to obtain equitable outcomes in our system, we must promote authentic relationships rooted in humanity and grounded in compassion and dignity. Next slide, please. With our team's belief serving as a guide, we went on to develop our mission statement. So our department works to build the capacity of teachers, leaders, and staff to create inclusive environments that honor every person's race, ability, gender, ethnicity, religion, sexual orientation, gender identity, including gender expression, language, immigration status, and socioeconomic status, to increase achievement for all students and to provide a variety of pathways to prepare students for college and careers. Next slide, please. The final piece of our framework describes what we consider to be the end state that we are working towards. Our department promotes systems and structures that provide support for all BCPS students, teachers, leaders, staff, and community members in which equity and access are embedded in all areas of academic programs, social emotional supports, and business operations. 
One thing you'll notice as you reflect upon our vision and our mission, you'll notice language embedded that comes directly from our superintendent, Dr. Rogers, and goals that she has set forth for the entire school system. So we wanted to make sure that what we had uh, produced as a team was also in line with Dr. Rogers' vision as our superintendent. Next slide, please. So the next part of our strategic plan is a high-level overview of the services that we provide to the BCPS community. And these include training, seminars, and professional learning, coaching, consultation, technical support, and Board of Education Equity Committee and Equity Advisory Partnerships. So you will see each of these components of what we do reflected in our strategic plan. Next slide, please. So everything I've shared to this point, you could think of as the front matter to our strategic plan. So from now on, I'm gonna go um, explore in more detail on the actual content of the plan. The content starts with four priority areas that our team chose to focus on during the school year. These four focus areas were chosen because we believe that they would enable us to make the greatest impact on achieving the mission that we set forth earlier in the plan. The priority areas also represent those, sub, those systems and structures that we would leverage as we work towards our vision. So our four priority areas, professional learning communities, or PLCs, our system-wide equity training, our equity academies, and our equity liaisons. Next slide, please. For each of our four priority areas, we included seven components that would contribute to our successful implementation of each of the priority areas of the plan. And those seven areas are the priority area itself and the year of implementation. We're focusing on the current school year, but we also did some mapping out um, two and three years out from now. I'm also looking at the details of each part of the plan, our target audience, the purpose and outcome of each part of the plan, um, any considerations we had to make, a uh, person or persons responsible, for implementation of that part of the plan, and then our internal and external partners uh, that help us um, achieve um, the plan and ultimately our mission and our vision. Next slide, please. The so first I wanna talk about our professional learning communities. Uh, the purpose of these uh, PLCs is for school and office leaders to collaborate, to examine problems of practice that impede increased achievement for all students. So this year, we will continue the professional learning communities that we started last year in partnership with principals, organized in feeder patterns, and um, in partnership with our executive directors from the Department of Schools. So we actually started these before last year, but we had taken um, a break as we were um, recovering from COVID. So last year was really a re-energizing of our professional learning communities that we had engaged in before COVID. We are also starting professional learning communities with our central office leaders who will also identify problems of practice that they will address in their work. And even though we're talking about a central office perspective, we are still focused on the increased achievement of all students. Next slide, please. Our second area um, is our system-wide equity training. So in our training, participants will engage in conversations about racial equity, and be critically self-reflective of thoughts, beliefs, feelings, and actions that promote or impede increased academic achievement for all students. Also, participants will develop the capacity to cultivate inclusive learning environments that increase student achievement for all students. This year, our target audience for equity training includes central office, executive directors, and other selected office heads, executive directors from the Department of Schools, principals, assistant principals, staff development teachers and professional learning liaisons, and school-based and office-based equity liaisons. Next slide, please. All right, our next component or focus area is our equity academies. In our equity academies, the participants will build their capacity to lead for equity and to facilitate change as they examine individual systemic and structural factors that impede increased achievement for all students. For this year's Equity Academies, classroom teachers are our target audience. Several, several of our Teacher Equity Academy members 
also serve as the equity liaison within their respective schools. Next slide, please. So throughout the strategic plan, you notice that equity liaisons serve as an indispensable community member um, in re regarding uh, the Department of Equity and Cultural Proficiency achieving our mission and realizing our vision. The purpose of, of equity liaisons is to have selective school or office members working within their schools or office with the leadership teams to help faculty and staff create equitable and inclusive educational and workplace environments for all. School-based equity liaisons will participate in system-wide equity professional learning, attend monthly meetings, as well as the Maryland Cultural Proficiency Conference in October, and additionally, they will attend a winter symposium and a spring symposium offered by the Department of Equity and Cultural Proficiency. Our central office equity liaisons will participate in system-wide equity professional learning, attend individual check-ins and collective equity liaison meetings, attend the Maryland Cultural Proficiency Conference and the winter and spring symposia, and they will participate in professional learning communities. So this concludes, I'm sorry, next slide, please. This concludes uh, my overview of the Department of Equity and Cultural Proficiency strategic plan uh, for the current school year. I look forward to bringing this committee updates on the progress of our plan uh, throughout this school year. Thank you for this time. And I will take any questions you may have at this point. Are there any questions for Mr. Handy on his presentation? I'd like to ask one. Um, how many equity liaisons do we currently have within the schools? Uh, so we, we are still gathering that count, Dr. Savoy. Um, so we have you know, 176 school centers and programs. Um, each school can have one. Some schools do choose to uh, split the duties for a co liaison. Uh, principals are actually asked to submit the names of their liaisons by October 1st. Uh, so I can uh, share an update via email with the committee, or I can certainly share that next time we come together. So I don't have the, the count right now. Um, I know last year um, we were kind of piloting the program. We had about 160, I believe, roughly. Uh, but I can get you all that number um, as soon as we uh, compile everything from this October 1 deadline that's coming up. OK, thank you so much. Yes, you're welcome. Are there any other questions at this time? I have a question. Uh, but Ms. Prim Prong, you go ahead. Thank you. Um, thank you for the update, um, Mr. Handy. Um, this year, the liaisons are also being paid, correct? Is that that was something that had started in the previous year? So I just, are they going to be paid again this year? Get the, um, I forget the name of its EDA or? Correct. Do they receive the stipend? Okay. Right. So this year is a different mechanism. Last year we were able to pay them a stipend. This year it is part of our um, extra duty activities or EDA, um, along with a range of other activities um, that teachers can fulfill in a school. And for this year, for the first time, equity liaison is one of them. But yes, they will be compensated uh, for fulfilling that role. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions? Thank you, Ms. Rumpong. I have a question. Please. I, I saw that coaching was one of the uh, strategies uh, within or the services that you all provide. How is that accessed? Mm -hmm. So um, our coaching is primarily for, so it's really done by my specialists primarily. Um, the way our specialists are assigned, we have four specialists. One is assigned to central office. The other three are each assigned to one of our zones, our school zones. So the coaching typically occurs when a principal um, has a matter relating to equity within their building um, that they want to be coached on. Um, a typical situation may be um, an incident happens in the school. Um, I'm trying not to divulge anything that's actually happened, uh, just to keep things um, you know, for confidentiality's sake, but there could be um, a situation where a student feels like they were, um, you know, the, 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 that they were harmed due to some racial insensitivity. And mm -hmm. 
there have been situations where a person might issue a letter to the community and regarding the situation and then they could call on um, a member of my team the specialist to come uh, really give technical assistance on writing of the letter but also coach them on how to talk to their staff about the incident um, perhaps how to talk to the family who was harmed in the incident um, so really being a thought partner um, and we do get calls like that where a principal will encounter something that they may not have familiarity with um, and they certainly will reach out to their executive director um, to make sure they're, you know, in, in line with the executive director's expectations. But as far as some of the nuances on how to, um, you know, approach it really in their full humanity, if you will, which is a major part of our work, that's when my team would be there to coach. And it, it could happen, you know, throughout a school year. Sometimes we'll have a principal going to a new school and they might be pushing equity, um, um, initiatives that the staff wasn't familiar with. The staff may push back um, and then a specialist could be there to help plan with the, the principal and the instructional leadership team on how they're actually going to meet goals. So this could be some short-term coaching, could be long-term depending on um, the nature of the issues that schools may have, but it's typically done between the specialist and the principal. We always ask that the principal is involved. Um, sometimes they'll bring in an assistant principal or more members of their instructional leadership team. And just as a follow up, uh, can you explain the difference between the professional learning communities and the academies? Yeah, I'm not sure yeah. I caught that. Yeah. OK, so let me start with the um, academies. Um, we really started the academies um, for a couple of reasons. Number one, to build community, um, to, to extend the reach of my team. Uh, we also wanted to invest in our teachers as equity leaders within their buildings. So uh, we really started with equity liaisons at that time. Um, particular liaisons seemed like they were particularly passionate about the equity work, very involved, and we formed um, this Teacher Equity Academy. And this was done um, around the time I came into this role. Um, the idea was we would bring teachers on and then we would help teachers in facilitating some of the same professional development that we facilitated across the system. So, you know, we would spend time with them um, going over our curriculum, as we call it, around our equity training, make sure they were comfortable with what we were sharing. Uh, we would pair them off. Now, one thing we were um, looking to do as well was extend our reach and really to include identities that did not exist in our office. So um, I will say our office, um, because we do isolate race, we are predominantly black. Every member of our office identifies as black except for one. And we realize that there are other racial perspectives that we do not hold in our office. So if you look at our Teacher Equity Academy, it also allows us to um, broaden the reach of, of who we have in our community as far as racial identity. Um, we also go beyond just race. Um, so we look for those who bring in perspectives, uh, could be race, uh, gender, gender identity, religion, other perspectives that we know don't exist within our office. And then when they present for the professional development, we tend to uh, create what we call interracial pairs. So I'm thinking about one school we have, the equity liaison, uh, both identify um, as women, uh, one black, one white, and then they typically present as an interracial pair um, in our, in our um, as Teacher Equity Academy members. So when we trained our equity liaisons last year in our pilot program, because we had 160 plus liaisons to go through our training, we really relied on Teacher Equity Academy members to do that training. So they would conduct training after school. We even had a Saturday option uh, for teachers, uh, but allowed us to be flexible and really extend our reach in providing um, that professional learning. So that's really what our Teacher Equity Academy is. We call it T for short. Um, we actually had an interest meeting last uh, a few days ago, so we're looking to broaden that. We're always looking to add to the community. Um, and we have some folks who are really excited to be a part of that. Um, our professional learning communities are really focused on um, the academic achievement and climate within the schools. So when we set up a professional learning community, the principals are organized in feeder patterns. So we look at our elementary, middle, and high. We usually label the professional learning community as the high school. Um, so if you think of all your high schools, all of our you know, PLCs are really called you know, particular high school. PLC, and within that PLC, you have the feeder middle schools, the feeder elementary schools. So we ask that 
the principles identify goals that are relative to the entire feeder pattern. And then we ask each school to also identify a goal that they can work on as a school. And then the idea is that that community operates throughout the school year to work on that system, that feeder pattern goal, and then also on the goal that each individual school identifies. And it's the planning is typically done with the principal, uh, the principal's executive director, and then the specialist from my team who's assigned to that particular school. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, any other, thank you, Ms. Harvey. Any other questions? All right. All right, the last item, thank you, Mr. Handy, thank for the excellent okay. presentation. You're welcome. Dr. Boy, if I may, I thought, uh -huh. um, Ms. Kaluski had a hand up. Oh, I'm so sorry. I just, I didn't want. We certainly recognize her at this time. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. It seems like you have put so much, and, you, and your whole team has put so much thought and care into being really deliberate to improve um, equity and inclusion. Um, it would be really neat. Um, to sort of watch the the progress um, and I just was wondering, um, you know, is there anything thus far in place to sort of track any kind of improvement in community in schools or, um, you know, feelings of community, feelings of inclusiveness, um, just to, you know, just to make sure that the hard work of your committee is paying off. But really, I really especially love your retreat or whatever you did where you came up with that beautiful set of values. Um, it's really commendable. Thank you very much. I um, appreciate the question. Um, so what I'm really excited about and what I wanted to bring this to you all early is because um, I, I want to be accountable to you as our equity committee, as board members on those results you asked about. So our, our PLCs are actually, our, so our first uh, principles leadership development will be a week from today. Uh, we'll be partnering with our Department of Schools Equity Liaisons to introduce um, this year's PLC plan to our principals. And then we actually have meetings on the calendar for October and for November. So we talked about, so think about our feeder patterns. Um, so think about every high school. So you're looking at about 25 high schools. Uh, so we're going to have about 25 visits in October and November to start the PLCs. So I would think that, you know, I'd like to give you an update probably every time I'm, I'm with you all. And then, you know, what I heard you ask for too is like you said, that quantitative data on improvement we should be seeing for academic achievement and also around climate, sense of belonging, things of that nature. So um, I'm right there with you. Again, this was my attempt to make sure I am um, being accountable to you all. And also the reason we put this plan together, is we really do believe it's gonna to contribute towards the goals that Dr. Rogers set forth. Um, so we want to be a part of that, and this is the way we feel like we can do that. So, but I absolutely will be bringing you all updates along the way on um, progress we're making. I'm sure there'll be some struggles as well. So, I, you know, because you all are the equity committee, I'm looking forward to discussing those with you all as well. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay. Anyone else have a question for Mr. Handy? On his presentation. Presentation was excellent, Mr. Handy. We appreciate this and it was very informative. OK, you, the last. And thank you, oh, you're welcome. The last item on the agenda is announcements. Um, OK, the next equity meeting is scheduled for Thursday, October 19th, 2023 at 4 p.m. Um, Ms. Lichter, do you, did you have something to say? Okay, maybe not. All right. Dr. Savoy, if I may. Uh-huh. So I, I see Ms. Lichter switching uh, devices. Um, we did have one other item around, well, some topics for this year. And then to start the discussion, we wanted to talk about some equity training for, uh, for the Board of Education. So I just wanted to make sure okay. we cover okay. that before we close. Great. OK, well, we're looking forward to that. OK, so is it OK if I proceed? Yes. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Corn, take the next slide, please. OK, thank you. So a uh, couple of the uh, there was, first of all, topics for 
this school year, I wanted to make sure, uh, you know, any committee members who had some topics that they wanted to suggest that I hear from you on those so I can start to, um, you know, investigate and develop any presentations, invite staff, et cetera. Uh, we also talked about ongoing equity training for Board of Education members. So um, I have a couple ideas I wanted to share. I figure we can open up for discussion and see where that goes. Uh, so the first place I went to um, thinking about your roles, board members, was to the Maryland, Maryland Association for Boards of Education, or MABE. Um, I am happy to report they do offer uh, equity training, and um, I got some information that they can help facilitate the equity training uh, for the board. Uh, the way it's typically done is that the chair of the board, so for us it would be um, our chair, Ms. Lecter, um, she would reach out on behalf of the entire board and um, initiate a request for training by sending the request to uh, the MABE executive director. And then from there, um, I guess the whole discussion on what that training would look like, expectations that you all have at the board and any other details could be discussed. Um, so I can follow up um, and share that information uh, with uh, Ms. Lichter and other members of this committee so you all can see what um, I received around um, MABE training. Um, any thoughts on on MAVE? I don't know if you all have experience with them that would make this a uh, top option or any, any thoughts on that as an option. I'll pause and hear what you all have on that. So, um, Mr. Handy, I'm still on the computer. I'm trying, I have to switch, but it's not working. But you're saying um, one suggestion is that we go through the MAVE training as a board. I just want to clarify what Yes, suggestions. yes, ma'am. Yes, so they, okay. right, they did confirm, I reached out to me, they did concern, they did confirm that they could help facilitate equity training for, for the board. Okay, have you ever participated in any of the, I guess not, the MAVE trainings or no, whether the um, board participated before? Right, I, I have not, um, I heard they do the training, but I admit I do not have a lot of uh, information on you know, effectiveness of the training or anyone's feedback from the training. I don't know if has any anyone okay. had firsthand experience in the committee. I mean, I've done a lot of MABE trainings and they're all, they've all been good. I haven't done the equity one, so I'm not sure who leads, you know, their equity training. So that would just be right. something for us to check out if that's the direction we go. Mm -hmm. um, when you do the academies for teachers, mm -hmm. who who leads that? That's your office, correct? Correct. So typically, like currently, if a teacher had equity training, most likely it would be a one of our teacher equity academy members facilitating that training. Um, when principals have training, assistant principals, um, executive directors, office heads, that's uh, it will be my staff and myself. We would actually facilitate the training. OK. Thank you. You're welcome. So one of the things I wanted to add, and this is coming from Mabe as well. Let's say you all didn't want to use um, Mabe in particular. They're saying they have another resource. Um, so it looks like we have someone who uh, was a counsel for Baltimore City and Baltimore, uh, Baltimore City, and for Prince George's County Boards of Ed, and that she has her own company that would offer the training. So the other avenue we could go with is someone more of a you know someone like that an independent consultant so they offer someone um, there are two people that i know used to uh, have a role similar to the one i'm in now for um, their respective school systems um, i know they have set up um, their own organization so that's another avenue to consult with someone like that um, to see if you know they offer training that would suit your your needs so um, any thoughts on that avenue? I think one discussion might be what are our needs? Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So maybe we're doing the product first before we talk about um, whether, I don't think it's whether, but what kind of, uh, what are our needs as a board as far as equity training in our, for our role? Um, and then maybe think about the product. So I know it came up, the reason I had brought it up to um, to leadership of this committee was because other board members had asked if we were going to be getting equity training for the board. So this just mm -hmm. felt like the right place for us to have this discussion as the equity committee. Mm 
Yep, I would agree. So, Ms. Lichter, Dr. Savoy, and 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 committee members, another idea I had um, goes back to to Mabe. Um, so, Mabe has these workbooks that are designed for you know folks in your role, governance of of school systems, of school board members. They have a workbook, and I did. I've recently received them, and I've sent them to be distributed to you all. So I don't know if you received them yet, but there should be one workbook for every board member. Um, I actually have the facilitators oh. guide for okay. those workbooks. So another option, if this works for all parties involved, I could actually facilitate some of that. Um, I guess going through that workbook. Now, when I review the workbook, the thing I liked about it, really, as even opposed to the training we do for our system staff, it is designed with you all in mind for the role you fulfill. Right. Um, where the training we do is, um, I want to say it's very human centered, and I'm not saying that's not part of how you all show up, but you know, you all have a role of governance. And um, the approach it takes, once you all identify those needs, as Ms. Lichter stated, you may find that workbook might be right where you all want to enter the training conversation um, and that equity capacity building conversation. So um, again, if we did something like that, I'm sure Maeve could offer you a facilitator. Um, again, if, if it does suit all parties involved, um, I might be able to serve as a facilitator for that as well. Oh, that would be great. Do you want to do it during a meeting time, the equity meeting or you know, committee meeting, or when would you facilitate it? So I would recommend that it not be doing the meeting, I guess, because uh -huh. um, I think for, how can I say this? So <laughs> typically, I guess our equity training is, is done in a space where we want folks, we talk about holding space, right? Holding space for everyone to enter the conversation from where they are. Um, you know, we don't film any sessions, we don't record them. So then I think the nature is, for it to be, um, I guess, as, as comfortable a setting, if you will, knowing that discomfort is going to be part of where we're going. Um, so I, I guess I would not want to, knowing that this meeting we're in now is a, is a public meeting governed by, you know, the Maryland Public Meetings Act. Um, I, I this would this would not be the venue I would recommend. Um, you now we like report out on what happened in training or any type of. Um, plans that come out of the training that this could be a good venue for that but i would think we would want to do um some other um some other venue really um so it's just the board members and again of uh, me or whatever facilitator might be a part of that discussion okay but i'd be curious to hear what what you and other members think okay we'll get back to you on that thank you okay all right Okay, is there any further business? All right. Mr. Handy, anything else? Uh, just one last thing, Dr. Savoy. Um, mm -hmm. We did talk about the, the equity training. I understand you all will discuss and uh, let me know what you all decide. Um, just want to make sure that there, um, there, are there any other requests or suggestions that I do see. I know you see the chat. Um, Mr. Lewski had a comment as well. Yes, she does. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I'm just going to throw this out there as a possible space of tranquility for the training um, at um, for the annual Reckon Parks joint meeting. Um, it was held um, in a beautiful room. At I'm trying to think of the name of the park, it's but the Sherwood House at the yeah. Cromwell oh, yeah. Alley yeah. at the Cromwell. So right, yeah. right. right. so Cromwell Jane was there Bridge. as well, and they mentioned that that room is always available if we ever want to use it. So it is a little bit more kind of peaceful and tranquil than the sterile board meeting <laughs> <laughs> um, locale. So I just yeah. wanted to throw that out there. And then just another thought I had in terms of this um, handbook that you were kind enough to send to all of us. I wonder if it would make sense for us just to sort of look over the handbook and maybe that would help kind of stir up as a collective board what our needs are um, to sort of direct 
where we might go with some training. So just two thoughts that I had as you shared. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. OK, is there any further business? All right, I, I would just like to echo. I think um, Felicia had a good idea as far as looking at that um, workbook first to see if we feel it meets our needs. Um, I don't know if Ms. Frempong is still on. Is Ms. Frempong mm -hmm. still on? Um, I am still here. Right. I know this was an area that you were interested in also. Do you have any input about what you think it should look like or feel like? Um, I have to, I would say I have to put some more thought into that. I was just wanting to make sure that it was something we pursued, but I can put some more thought to that and then, okay. I guess, send an email out or reach out to the chairs or and or Mr. Handy about that. Okay. Um, Mr. Handy, you said that the workbook we're waiting to, you're waiting to get it or we should get it? Right, you all, they were, um, my assistant put them in inner office mail, I want to say the end of last week. So okay. no, no committee members have received theirs yet. But did you give it, did you send it to um, Ms. Gover's office? Yes. Okay, she'll probably give it to us then um, on Tuesday. She usually holds stuff and gives it to us at the next board meeting. So okay. then maybe um, to Ms. Frempong's point, we should take a look at that through our lens, see mm -hmm. if we think that that um, makes sense. And then at the next meeting, we can talk more about lo the logistics if that content looks right. Because it should be the full board that gets the training. We're just deciding on what it might look like, but then the full board would be the ones to receive the right. training. Okay, yeah, understood. Okay, anyone else have a comment or a question? Is there any further business? Mr. Handy, Ms. Littner? Mm -hmm. No? I'm good. OK, all right. Hearing none, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a good evening.